This is Footy Talk, your daily dose of news, interviews and analysis from the world of AFL. We've got Jay-Z Clark again today and we are deep diving on the trade period. But today, Jay-Z, mm. we're going to look at the clubs. Who are the biggest winners? Who are the biggest losers? Which teams to keep an eye out for and what we think this will mean for some teams in 2024. I want to get your take straight into it. Give yep. us your biggest winners. I know the yep. Herald Sun have done their big lift out and you've given rate scores yes. out of 10. and. Yes. A, how B's, many... and C's and D's and all the different types of ratings. How do you decide which one you come up with? <laughs> what you... works better, out of 10 or an A, B, I, or C? Do you think list managers call us and text us about their trade grades? Do you think, they, do you think they're so... Oh, yeah, they're oh, sensitive as. They would for oh, sure. We would never. We might not hear from them for a few days. But this is the list manager's grand final week, remember. <laughs> you get the, you almost get the preemptive strike too. Hey, mate, how are you going with the other <laughs> trade grades? <laughs> Honestly, the amount of feedback we get, it is glorious. I think you can't, it's hard to look past Sydney, to be honest. And they did their work early in the trade period. We know it. Brody Grundy, he's got to have a chip on his shoulder. He's got to point the proof. Small grand SCG. He could have a big year next year. Taylor Adams, speaking of point to proof, he got kicked out of the midfield at Collingwood and he wants to um, just basically be the pivot inside and around him. you got uh, Errol Goulden and Braden Campbell and all these gun sort of Sydney ball winners. So you look at Hambling, yeah, he could be okay. He could fill a role down back. And James Jordan as well will be ready to go. So I like Sydney's moves. Who do you like, Joey? Yeah, Sydney addressed the need. Their yep. contest and clearance numbers this year were really poor, really yep. inconsistent, a big issue. So they've specifically targeted that facet of their game. The only question for me with the Swans, can their big three forwards now, McLean, Amadi, mm. McDonald, hold up? Are mm. they capable mm. of getting Sydney to another grand final? That's going to be their challenge. But otherwise, I think they are a team that should be spiking next year. For me, the big winners, I've got two. Port Adelaide were one of them. Yeah. I think, again, talk about specific needs. Yep. They targeted the Ruckman. They've ended up getting two of them. Yep. Sweet and Soldo. Uh, they've got their two key defenders in Radigalia and Zerk Thatcher to shore up that back line now with Alir Alir. They've still got Houston and, and Farrell and Burton, some other guys back there, Bergman. Can you count on Radigalia? Oh, I'm not sold on Radigalia. I'm not sold on him as a as an elite key defender, but they had to target someone. You can only yeah. target what's available. This yeah. is the other thing too. Some people are, oh, you can, you've got to try and get the big fish. You can only get what's available. And Radigalia they felt was up there with Ben Mackay as the two best key defenders. So they get him. Yep. What it looks like with him and Alir as the two key pillars will be interesting. But I think because they both like to intercept the mark and just give that little bit of off. leg and get a little <laughs> bit of leg rope. But we'll see how how Ken Inkley structures up defensively, how mm. aggressive they play and utilize the assets they have back there. So they're the other ones for me and probably the Bombers. Yep. I'm a big fan of the Bombers. They didn't give up much in the draft. I think Gresham significantly adds to their forward half talent. The one about Gresham, so a lot of people, and I know you're bullish on Lockie Schultz as well, and mm -hmm. there's a bit of recency bias there because Jade Gresham has had better seasons than Lockie Schultz had this year. Mm. He's kicked 30-plus goals twice previously, like Lockie Schultz has done. But Jade Gresham's also had three other seasons where he's averaged 20-plus disposals and four clearances, something yep. that Lockie Schultz has never been able to do. I think Gresham's got high upside. If he gets himself fit and, and uh, in the right headspace, which I believe he will. The defensive stuff? Well, he's not a great tackle, but he, he averages three tackles a game, same as Lockie Schultz. You know, so mm. it's not like, and I know Shooter's a better pressure player. Yep. But I think Gresham, I mean, his asset is going to be his offensive weapon. And yep. I think Ben Mackay is significant. Yeah. I, I rate him. Again, it's the flow on effect. So it means that Laverde doesn't have to play on yes. the big banana. It means Ridley can intercept. Mm -hmm. They've still got Jake Kelly if they want him down there. And then the other halfbacks with Redmond and, and uh, McGrath, et cetera. So. I like what the Bombers have done. They yep. should be playing finals for me next year. Oh, no, they have to be playing finals. It's been, what, 20 years since they've won a final. They are bound for September. I'll certainly have to be. If they're not, that would just be a, an enormous disappointment. Dersma on the wing as well. I mean, they've got a larger side coming through. The first round pick obviously can play outside midfield. Sammy Durham, does he move a little bit more forward? Nick Martin. We're talking about him earlier this season as an all Australian contender. He so, could be a half forward. They might be able to shift him around and have have a bit of depth. So there's a lot of mid. There's a lot of midfield. There's a lot of there. talent. Like, does she fit in that group anymore? No, there's no. I don't think he does. I yeah. think Caldwell, Setterfield started Hobbs. well before he got injured. Hobbs, Perkins, they want to play more midfield minutes. Yep, they're stacked, and they've got another top ten draft pick this year. So mm. Bombers are in good shape. You got yep. one other winner, Collingwood. I think they get better with Short. So I think with a lot's been said about uh, Ginevan. You know, he's been inconsistent. He had a quiet grand final, Jack Ginevan. He played the final against Melbourne, committed that late turnover to Stephen May, uh, almost got scored against. So I think, you know, it was, it was quite a September. Didn't have a big one against Brisbane. 12 goals in, the, in 14 games this year. In the Premiership decided. Jack Ginevan. Mm. Well, but that's his one, Wood, isn't he? Mm. The thing is, earlier in his career, 
he had the he had the ducking. He drew a lot of free kicks, kicked a lot of goals. Twenty five percent of his goals last year were in twenty twenty two were yep. from free kicks, and that I feel like has been taken away a little bit because of the umpiring, etc. So he's got to develop some other tricks and bow and uh, strings to his bow. He has to get fitter. So we'll know in two months when he comes back. Um, for preseason training, how Jack Ginevan will go. But I like Collingwood. They get uh, Schultz. Well, the older players get another year older. That'll be the challenge. They need some growth from underneath. Um, uh, Harv- uh, Harvey, Har- Harvey Harrison. Harvey. Yeah. Call him Ed Lang. Um, they got Ed Allen. Ed Allen. Finn McRae. So they need Reef get- McInnes. They've probably got to start to blood a few yep. of them, don't they? Just gradually drip feed them in. Yep. Because they do have, I think they've got nine, 11 players, nine players over 30 for next season. So The future first round pick. I thought that was one of the smartest moves of the trade period from the Dockers to go that because traditionally, we saw Geelong, they won the flag and then dropped down the order. So history will tell you it is hard to win them uh, back to back. So I That'll be a big fascination for me. The last time Collingwood coughed up, coughed up a future first round pick, it ended up being pick two to GWS. Right. What about some clubs that probably would have liked to have done a bit more, but probably walked away a bit disappointed with where it ended up? Geelong, I think, um, strange. They waited two weeks, ended up picking, getting pick 25 for Adagalera Galera and 76 and 94. I think they wanted a midfielder, an a grade midfielder if they could get it to try and boost that engine room. I know Cam Guthrie comes back from injury, but a Bailey Smith type, I reckon in 12 months' time, there'll be a big play for a gun midfielder. Uh, almost another danger field move. So keep an eye on that. But, you know, I don't felt like they got a lot better this trade period. In fact, they didn't. Um, and I think St Kilda, geez, they would have loved some more top-end talent too. Ross almost coached too well. They made finals. They end up with pick 13. That's a no-man's land in this year's draft, I, I think. So they weren't able to get... Other than Liam Henry, you know, another another jet midfielder in there. So there wasn't there wasn't any anything available really. Yeah. I mean, we've spoken about there weren't yep. any A grade talent available, so there wasn't much they could really do. Yeah, you're right though. They've got to nail their draft picks because Ooh. they wanted to go to the draft. They will go to the draft picks thirteen and twenty one. Mm. It is a tricky period. Yep. Got to nail it. It's got yes. to be Soss and Gubby at their very best, yes. and the recruiters yes. being able to nail those picks because they do want to continue to build around Filippo and mm. Owens and Winda, uh, Wanganine Miller and these sorts of players. So it's going to be a big, uh, big draft for St Kilda in the first round. What do you think about the Hawks' moves? I thought they needed to bolster their back line. They end up with three forwards. What do you take on yeah, Sam Mitchell? I think no, I'm, oh, I'm a bit. Uh, Unsure? Unsure about their, their selections. I'm not a big Marby Old Chol fan. I mean, there's a reason he's played 61 games in eight years. He's inconsistent. His effort's inconsistent. We know he can kick a goal, but he kicked 44 of his 78 goals in one year. And mm. the rest of the time, he's just, tease? I don't know, he's a tease. He's 27 as well. He's not young. Um, Ginevan, I'm not sold on him either as a player. I think he's a one goal a game. So he started the year like a house on fire last year. He kicked 19 goals in his first seven games. Yep. And that was through that Anzac Day period, and he was getting the free kicks. And then from that point on, he's been about a goal a game player his mm. last 30 games. And he's not a big ball winner. He doesn't set up a lot of goals. I'm not sold on him. And it's going to be a lot harder in a forward line that's going to be down the bottom of the ladder as opposed to playing in a forward line that have won whatever it was, 30, their last 37 games or something like that. So the Hawks are an interesting one for me. What about some teams to keep an eye on going yeah. forward that you yeah. think can be the sort yeah. of big spikers and maybe ready to launch in another 12 months? Fremantle, for me, the obvious one, because they've got three first-round picks in next year's draft, obviously, and some cap space, like a lot of clubs. So they'll be going, you think, for another uh, big banana forward. The link has already been made to Logan McDonald. So you watch that. I know Aaron Norton signed a big deal at the Western Bulldogs. Still, as a West Australian, you'd re- be revisiting that. I think, depending on how the Bulldogs go, will Luke Beveridge keep his job? You know, will they finally able to maximise their talent? Big watch from the Western Bulldogs. So uh, Fremantle is clearly one of them. I mentioned Geelong, who uh, will be looking for some extra uh, midfield talent. And I think St Kilda, now that they cleared off Caulfield, I think was on 500. Uh, Billings the same on 500. Gresham was on 800. So what's that? The best 1. part? 1.8. Yeah, it's, it's the best part of $2 million. And then and we're bringing in, so Henry and Dow probably cost them 800 combined. So Dave Misson said in the press conference afterwards, he said, oh, I think we got the capacity to do something interesting. So what that means, like they will throw the kitchen sink at someone. There will be so many clubs though that have a lot of money built up now because of the salary cap increase yeah. and because of some shuffling, there are going to be some key forwards yeah. and some midfielders who are going to be Fill absolutely licking their lips. <laughs> they are coming out at the right time. Sometimes You're like, considering a comeback, Jay. Sometimes like, I wish I was. I wish I was right in my prime, my career right now because sometimes Jay-Z just at the right time, right place yeah. and some players, yeah. um, Ben King, Jamal yes. Eagle Hagen, Logan McDonald. There's other players, McCluggage, a free agent. There's mm. going to be some players getting some big, big money yes. next year. Well, we'll be busy with our uh, money balling and trade speculation. Jamal Eagle Hagen, would you be offering him a 10 year deal at a million dollars each? Like, yep. Been linked? Yep. 
I would. Oh, that, I think I think he's got the capability of being one of the best players in the comp in a couple of years. Everyone forgets he's had three or four years. He's building. Yeah. And he's shown that he is going to be a star. Key forwards take four, five, six years yep. before they hit their straps. Yeah. Oh, I think that he's an absolute beauty. Dylan Shield didn't get to St Kilda. We mentioned him uh, possibly not the best 22 at Essendon. I think his future, you know, in talking about players and clubs who maybe missed or it didn't work out. Harrison Petty's the other one. So 12 months time, Adelaide. Did you see the interview? I didn't see on it. The I heard course. about it. Yeah. Was it staged or was it sort of <laughs> he, just he coincidence? He basically said, come and get me in 12 months time, the Crows. So Melbourne, I don't care what they say. They're going to be hitting the key forward market hard this year in the... Um, in the possibility, in the likelihood that Petty does go back to South Australia. Because they got Van Royen. He's only 20, Joey. Yeah, he's like still a, a baby. Like he, he's going to get better. Yeah, I know. But what if he gets sore or he has a flat patch? Like, it's just a lot to bank your premiership winner on. Harrison Petty, who's linked to South Australia, and Jacob Van Royen, who's going to be in his third season, there in their premiership window. I think that'll be uh, interesting. Adelaide got picks 10 and 14. Probably try and get up the draft order. What about West Coast, North Melbourne? Would you be... Would you be offloading the number one pick, Joey? You've got to look at it. It depends if you're looking at it from the Kangaroos camp or the West Coast camp. I'll start with the Kangaroos camp. Yep. If I'm the Kangaroos, I'm sitting pretty. I'm, I'm happy to go to the draft with picks two and three. Yep. I would offer, though, West Coast yep. one of those picks, so pick three, yep. and I would give them 15, 17, and even 18 yep. if they wanted it yep. and say, West Coast, you need a glut of picks. West yep. Coast need more kids than North Melbourne because they've yep. got none. They've yep. got Hewitt and yep. Jinby, maybe one or two. They are yep. a mile away. Yeah. If West Coast don't take that, oh, if I'm North Melbourne, I say, no worries. That's all I'm going with. Mm -hmm. West Coast have got a decision to make. Mm -hmm. Do they need five picks inside 20 or four picks inside yeah. 20? Well, they'll yeah. have their own 23. Yep. Or do they hold on to pick one? Yeah. So if I'm West Coast, yeah. I think I want a, a group of picks. Yeah. But is 15, 17, 18 enough? Or can I start looking around at other clubs and maybe looking at Melbourne 6 and 11, looking at mm -hmm. Adelaide 10 and 14, and maybe get the kangaroos involved? Swaparoo. Swaparoo. And come yep. up with more picks. Because if I'm West Coast, as great as Harley Reid you know, might be, and we yep. know we've, we've done a history on number one picks, it doesn't always pan out what they think at the time. Yep. I think West Coast need a group of picks. Yep. Are you a bit different? You think West Coast should just take Reid? The thing, and then our pick 24 is their next pick. But it, there's been a lot of speculation about, oh, West Coast don't want to take Reid. I've spoken to West Coast no, about Harley Reid. they want Reid, and, and Reid wants to go to West Coast. They love him. Yes. And I said, what about the interview? And he said he came across as Luke Hodge. Yep. That's the presence he had. Yep. So they are absolutely in love with him. This is, I think... It's the, not about Reid, is it, leaving. It's about whether West Coast need more picks in yes. this year's draft. Yeah, I think the homesickness is just... That part of it can be so overrated. Yes. The thing is, if I'm West Coast, this is the key here. You want picks inside the top 10. So yep. you mentioned 6 and 11. 6 starts to get my attention. I don't want picks in the teens. The stats tell you one in every three players picked in the teens plays to 200 games. It is still a lottery, but because they're a first round pick, you have high expectations. And in this year's draft, the, the shelf, the talent shelf is at pick 10 or even pick nine. So after that, there's a huge drop off. If West Coast is doing this deal, you want at least two picks inside the top 10 to even think about it. Because I think there's every chance Harley Reid comes out next year and in his first month, goes absolutely well, we've seen what top, bang. top early picks can do to teams. We've seen yeah. Nick Dacos. We've seen Will Ashcroft. We've seen Harry Sheasel. You can make well, an impact on a team straight away. Okay. If you're North Melbourne, right, and would you give up Harry Sheasel for picks two and three in this year's draft? Because that's what they're looking at. No. They think, well, that's and that's why they go, we'll take Harley Reid. Because would North Melbourne give up Harry Sheasel? No chance. No chance, right? So I'm on sort of West Coast thinking that, They've got the Luke Hodge. They've got the leadership potential there and the ruggedness to go with Jinby to really develop a combative game style. Yes, they need more, but I think they know that. And the last one, watch out for the Gold Coast Suns next year under oh. new coach Damien Harwick. They're getting four academy kids inside Pop. the top 30. Four Jed Walter. Jed Walter is like a cross Kerno? between Charlie Kerno, but with Josh Kennedy from West Coast um, tackling ability. Like yep. he's a he's a machine. Yep. He's an 18-year-old machine. Yeah. Um, Jakey Rogers is a little fella. He's a little jet. Um, they, I mean, Ethan Reed is a unicorn. He's going to take time, but yeah. he's 200 Tim centimeters English. and ran like a five minute 52 K like ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and they've got Will Graham as well. So what I'd be interested to see how many of them fit into Gold Coast best side. Mm -hmm. They might be the big spikers for me. That's all we have time for, Jay-Z. Yep. You go and earn yourself a little vacation with the family. Thank you, Joey. Enjoy a couple of bottles of red. Mm -hmm. Hope you've enjoyed this edition of the draft and the, sorry, the trade period with Jay-Z Clark. We'll be back Monday when Kate sits down with Ali Blackburn to wrap up round eight of the AFLW. Until then, enjoy your day.